Alrighty. So, welcome back to some online reading. Today we're going to read some poems instead. Um, just as so a shorter chunk again before um, tomorrow we're going to jump back into the cycle, start with Fallen, Yosef and Nivu, and then back to poetry again. So, um, it'll be an open discussion again. Um, so, if you have any questions, um, and I'll talk through some points as we go. Um, the book, uh, the sorry, the not the book, the poems are about. Um, we've got "Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night" by uh, Dylan Thomas, "Still I Rise" by Maya Angelou, uh, "Massacre" by Tasia Avia, um, and then we've also got one from my "Milk and Honey" book by Rupi Kip, um, Rupi Koa. So um, those are the four we're going to be looking at um, today. So the themes in these poems are all about like strength and hope and that perseverance um, that we also have in um, Yosef and the Vu. So um, the, they're kind of the same across all four of these poems. So do comment and ask any questions if you have any. I'll do my best to answer. Um, and if, let me know if there's any words you're unsure of as well. Cool. All right. So without further ado, let's start with Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas. Dylan Thomas, he was a poet from 1914 to 1953. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Though wise men at the end no dark is right, because their words have forked no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by crying how bright their frail deeds might have danced in the green bay, rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang in the sunlight and learned too late they grieved it on its way, do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men hear death whose see, who see with blinding sight. Blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on the sad height, curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. So this one's an interesting one that's got that really great repetition um, of the rage, rage against the dying of the light or do not go gentle into that good night at the um, end of each, sort of it alternates at the end of each stanza, which is really cool. Um, and it's all the um, bright, right, night, fight, sight, um, as well as the they, they, day, way um, rhyming um, scheme, which is really cool. Cool, oh, so I think we'll go on to I Still Rise by Maya Angelou now. This one, uh, I'm trying to do some um, like popular ones as well as a couple of unfamiliar ones that are in there. Okay, Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. And she was, um, she was a poet from 1928 to 1914 when she passed away. So, you may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I rise. Do you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes? Shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Because I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like air, I rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. 
I am a black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Cool. So this one's a very popular um, one that um, will be well known. It's got that again, that repetition, I rise, um, repeated throughout um, lots of really good um, metaphors. Um, I've got diamonds, I've got gold mines in my backyard, um, my shoulders falling down like teardrops. That's a really great simile um, there. And there's lots of really great um, language features throughout this, which is really interesting. Cool. And our next one is uh, by Tusiata Avia, a New Zealand poet um, called Massacre. And this one is about um, to, uh, about the um, shooting in Christchurch at the mosques there. Okay. <coughs> this one's a bit longer, so I just wanted to clear my throat. Okay. Massacre, Thursday, 14th March. When I arrive in Auckland and Hene learns that I've moved back to Christchurch, she asks me if I know that it's a bad place. It is, a built, it is built on a swamp. Many bad things have been done to Māori there. Yes, I tell her, and remember standing six years old in the hallway, the swamp spirits rising up through the floor, walking to school through them, sitting beside them on the bus. Friday, 15th March. The white spirits rise up from the swamp and many bad things happen. The white spirits rise up from the swamp and kill those who kneel and pray and stand and walk and run and punch the windows out with their bare hands and drag themselves through the glass and stumble and fall and find the body of a boy and close his eyes and take his cell phone from his hand and tell his mother screaming, though it, screaming through it that her son is dead and then they stand again and run and run and run. We white men who have carved ourselves into statues and guard the four avenues rise. We, Queen Victoria, made of stone, who stares into the air past every kind of massacre, rise. We, far right, we rise. We, skinheads, we rise. We, the white supreme, we rise. We are white ghosts and we rise up out of the swamp. You cry and shake as if the earthquake is coming, but we are not here for you. We are here for the three-year-old Muslim boy, for the 71-year-old Muslim man, <clears throat> for the 45-year-old Muslim man, for his 16-year-old son, for the 44-year-old Muslim woman, for the 65-year-old grandmother, the 14-year-old Muslim boy, the 25-year-old Muslim woman. We are here for 101 Muslims. We are not here for you. You can lock down your schools and your buildings and your pain can come and go, but we don't care. We have not come for, here for you. We will not chase you through Hagley Park. We are here on Holy Day Friday for Al Noor Mosque. We will not chase you through Eastgate Mall. We are here on Holy Day Friday for Linwood Massad. We are only killing the people you have been calling the terrorists, and today we look like Fortnite. Sunday, 17th of March. I watched Jacinda at Al Noor after many bad things happened. She's in a black and gold hijab. She says many things, but she has her hand over her heart and she keeps it there. The spirits have sunk back out of sight. You are watching that individual from Australia. You are saying to me, he is an us. But I grew up with him. He was Eddie the skinhead in my science class who everybody knew. He had a mouldy girlfriend for a while and wore a Nazi trench coat, which you told me was cool. Remember you grew up with him? He was Danny, not in your class, because he was younger than you, but you watched him walk through the playground with his boot boy boots and the swastikas. It was Christchurch and all other places back when, we, when you were young, and it was cool, and it was the fashion. It was the fashion, and you and I were into it. Friday, 22nd of March. In Auckland, I sit at a vigil. The woman of Nati Fatu 
call to the sacred land across Tamariki Makoro. The woman call to the martyrs, to the brokenhearted. The women do the grieving for us. The women remind us of Parihaka and Ruatoki, the murdered and the murderers. The women say that they have been fighting since Captain Cook landed, and after they grieve, they will fight. A white man could, who could be scary in another place hands me a sign and I take it. It says New Zealand was founded on white supremacist violence. He looks into my eyes, I nod and hoist it to my shoulder. I watch a white woman weep and tell me it is hard to be white. I t tell her tears are a beginning. I read a white poet talk about how he feels the shame of talking about how he feels. A white poet can only talk about how he feels. I can only talk about how I feel. I can only weep like the white woman and write you this poem that will not end. So that one's pretty heavy and packed full of hidden themes, hidden, excuse me, hidden messages. <clears throat> Um, and really full of like New Zealand language, New Zealand themes that we can recognise. And obviously because it's so recent, this is the newest issue of um, Best New Zealand Poems that I found this in. Um, so it's, you know, it's hot on our issues that we've, we've been facing for the past year, which is um, really cool. It's got, I like how it um, kind of echoes back and sort of uses that language that Maya Angelou did with the we rise, we rise, we rise, you know, that feeling of passion that everyone, um, no matter what walk of life they come from, of rising up against something um, is universal. And so that's why I kind of wanted to use that theme of perseverance and strength and standing up against something that um, you believe in is, you know, it's it's universal. It's because, you know, we've got Maya Angelou who did a lot for the civil rights movements in America. And then um, this hate crime that we had here in New Zealand, you know, it's similar across the world, these themes of standing up for what you believe in. Um, yeah. Cool. So too, wrap it up um the last one i wanted to do is from a book called milk and honey by rupee kaur um i'm probably not pronouncing that right but um there's lots and lots of poems in here it's quite cool it's got really good illustrations in it um as well um but i've just pitched this one here um they don't have titles on them because lots of them are quite short um so yeah here we go did you think i was a city Big enough for a weekend getaway. I am the town surrounding it, the one you've never heard of, but always pass through. There are no neon lights here, no skyscrapers or statues, but there is thunder, for I make bridges tremble. I am not street meat, I am homemade jam, thick enough to cut the sweetest thing your lips will touch. I am not police sirens, I am the crackle of a fireplace. I'd burn you and you still couldn't take your eyes off me because I'd look so beautiful doing it. You'd blush. I am not a hotel room. I am home. I am not the whiskey you want. I am the water you need. Don't come here with expectations and try to make a vacation out of me. I really like that one because it's sort of, that, that again, that message of perseverance and um, strength, that inner strength that... Um, believing you are worth more than someone might put on you. Um, I really like all the metaphors in this, you know, I'm not street meat, I am homemade jam. You know, I'm not, I'm not just some quick meal, I'm a slow process, a slow burning pot of jam, you know, that takes a while to make and make delicious. Um, and then, you know, it's something homemade jam is like really well valued, you know, when you get one from your grandma or your nana, you kind of value that pot of homemade jam and it lasts a bit longer than all the rest, you know. It's a really cool metaphor. Yeah. Cool. Well, hopefully you enjoyed those uh, poems. Um, Thanks so much for watching, and I hope next week, uh, not not next week, uh, tomorrow, um, we're going to go into um, chapter two of Fallen. So I hope to see you there. Kakite.